welcome to the Abbey War Gallery in Grimsby, where literally thousands of people have been flocking to see what is probably one of the most spectacular finds of the 21st century. Come in here and find out. I'm here to tell you about Michael and Mandy Cruikshank and this picture hanging on the wall. It's a portrait so rare and magical, it's literally taken the art world by storm. It's a skillfully drawn pastel picture that's been produced approximately 125 years ago by a young lady artist called Jean Donadou, and it's said to be none other than the great Vincent van Gogh. Jeanne Donadieu. Well, it was just slightly fortuitous that we actually got a hold of the um, Jean Donadieu, the misunderstood. We happened to be talking to a reporter from the local newspaper who is hugely supportive of what we do here at Abbey Walk Gallery, and he very kindly gave me Mandy's um, contact for the paint or the contact for the painting. So I rang up and was talking to her about it. Thought it would fit into this in exhibition beautifully. And then when I actually saw it, I thought, gosh, there is so much more about this painting that probably hasn't come to light. And just talking to the owner, talking to them about their research of the painting, what it actually means to them, and actually what it means to the world in a whole about this incredible man, Vincent van Gogh. We can just look into his life. This is a photo of him at that time. And it's just so incredibly exciting what we can actually learn about him um, as, he, as he was. My husband saw it first and he printed out a picture and he just presented it to us and just said, who's that? And we were all sitting around chatting and everybody looked and said, uh, Vincent van Gogh. And, but we didn't know anything about it. But he had a great big grin on his face and I said, why, is this for sale? Because he, he loves ploughing through all the auctions and things. He loves looking through what's, you know, what's available. And he was like, he said, yeah. He said, but I don't think they've seen who it is. They haven't noticed. It's just being sold as a, a, a pastel of a man. He said, it's called The Misunderstood. I was like, wow, you know, it's like, can't leave that there then. We're going to have to sort of take a risk on this. So we bought it. And then when we got it back, that was when we found the labels. And that was when everything just started coming to light. And it was just an amazing journey after that. Jan Donagy was an unusual artist because she was, you know, she's one of these that's unfortunately gone way off into the mists of time. So there were only sort of a few to make any comparisons to. But it was the actual subject that jumped out at him this time. It was it, most definitely this is a very distinguishable person, Vincent van Gogh. Wow, you know, you you know him a mile away. J'habite au 17 rue Laval. Michael had also researched the address of the label on the back and he said, guess what? He said they live four doors away from each other. Four doors away. And that was because the address of the artist was on the back. The address was actually a road that wasn't really known. It wasn't tied in with anything. But when you research the road name, it had undergone a name change in 1887 from Rue Laval. And Rue Laval was like the road to be on at the time. It's all, everything just seemed to be around that. Everybody was there. Theo and Vincent lived together at that address at number 25, and she was at number 17. So there was a four door, uh, four doors between. What an amazing find. Here we've got somebody that looks exactly like him. We have now not located the artist as being just in France with him or just Paris. You know, we've got them on the same road, a few doors from each other. <laughs> We know, for example, that this hat that he's wearing, he went on later that year to paint it on top of the Statue of Venus. 
Um, his trousers, uh, he wore peasant-like, which was particularly how the Dutch peasants wore their trousers, but rolled up. And this again, from a gentleman that came to the gallery, was able to say, well, he actually got told off by some clergy because he dressed as a peasant and he was told not to, and he wouldn't not carry on dressing the way he wanted to. So that just supports the fact that there he is sitting with his trousers rolled up, his boots always again. He painted his boots prolifically. He was a prolific writer and on top of the desk, it's outlined just the piles and reams of paper. He had all these books on his desk, but the interesting thing was that the Van Gogh Museum actually on their website have a picture of the desk that he painted of, him, of his own desk covered in books. There's not a paintbrush in sight. This is, this is what he loves. He loves his books. So that all tied in as well with his interests. And the fact that it's so scruffy, and that was the one thing that drove Theo nuts, you know, it did. It, although he said he missed him so much after he'd gone, he, uh, when he was living with him, his messiness nearly drove him to despair. <laughs> They believed he wouldn't sit in front of a, a female artist because he felt awkward around women. So I thought, well, does he look as if he's awkward around women? Because to me, he does anyway. He looks awkward in this, in this portrait. He looks a little bit uncomfortable. So we asked Richard Newman. He's one of the top uh, behaviour experts in the country. And he's done work for the BBC and for Parliament and everyone. He's a really nice person. He did this amazing report, really broke down the, uh, the appearance, what he... Um, what everything meant about how he was sitting, the facial expression, everything. If you look at self-portraits of Vincent van Gogh, his preferred pose and his preferred stance to actually draw himself was at this sort of angle as well. So there's just so much information here. And I'm sure when the experts actually get a hold of it, they'll be able to tell us so much more actually about, about the man. You know, and I know that Mandy has found much more information from body experts, from facial experts, and from people that are going to tell us so much more about him. Well, we looked up the forensics and facial recognition experts around the world, and we found that some of the best ones were in Dundee University, and that's Professor Caroline Wilkinson and her team. And I know it's difficult to go on, an, uh, on a work of art rather than a photograph, but even so, they, they do that. That's what they, they're the professionals for doing that. And so they did us an amazing breakdown of it. They did the measurements. They, they compared it to other portraits. And, um, and their conclusion at the end was, we believe this to be Vincent van Gogh. Interest in this particular painting has just become global. We found out this morning, for example, that it's gone to the Los Angeles Times, that it's already been in a uh, newspaper in New York. In fact, we've had a gentleman from a New York uh, broadsheet again ring us this morning and ask us to send us further information about it. New York, of course, is probably one of the centre of the art world, so the interest, of course, would be there. And just the interest from the general public, from people that want to come in and see him as well. And people have stood in front because they know the story of Vincent van Gogh, because it's a moving story and because it touches you as well. People have just stood in front of it and we've had several people that have burst into tears. I had one about five or six minutes ago and she just really stood back and said, it just makes me quite tearful because he's such an extraordinary man. And he was, he's had such a huge impact on the art world as we know it now, although in his lifetime he had really no recognition at all, which is so sad. This was a top-to-toe picture of Vincent van Gogh and you could see his expression in it and he looked as if he was kind of like miffed from being sat there for so long. And also there's always that little bit of sadness in his face that you see in his others and she'd managed to capture that in a pastel, which must be so difficult to capture expression because I always think of like the Mona Lisa Everybody's so amazed at the expression in that, but you've got it. And with Vincent, you've got this wonderful expression that everybody feels for. And there it was, in this portrait, this little bit of sadness in there that always makes you feel for him, that you want to say, it's going to be OK. And that little feeling as well that made it kind of sad that four years after that, he was dead. Yeah.